Now let's take a look at some analytical methods to model the movement of water over a surface. And of course, this goes without saying, water, it always goes down slope. We can use these to extract several different forms of hydrologic information from different surface grids or surface rasters. Typically, we'll use DEMs or digital elevation models to do this with the Z values depicting elevation using the floating point grids instead of integers. In other words, floating points, which allow for the potential for decimal points, are not simply limited to whole numbers, as is the case with integers. This allows us more precision in the processing of the data and the spatial functions that we're going to be using. But of course, we already know that, in general, integer grids are used to represent discrete data, and floating point grids are used to represent continuous data. Why I mention this is, as we go through all of these different functions, we're going to have to kind of go back and forth by converting data from raster to vector. And why we have to do that is we have to keep in mind the limitations regarding the storage of the data. The surface hydrology functions that we'll be using include flow direction, sinks, fill, flow accumulation, stream network, stream order, flow length, basin, and watersheds. Throughout our analysis, we'll be, for the most part, using this Marion County digital elevation model. This will be used as our input grid, but also later as our base map for our final output. What I'm about to show you is a modification of a flow chart that's out there. Uh, it's something that was originally created from ArcInfo, which then was replaced by ArcMap, which is then replaced by ArcGIS Pro, and who knows what's going to come next. But with a digital elevation model, the first thing we would do is we would compute the flow direction. And we do that because the flow direction is going to help us determine the direction the water flows across the surface. From that, we can then help to identify or determine if there are any sinks or pits in the surface. And if we do, if we identify that there are sinks in the surface, we got to do a little bit more to it. We got to fill those pits. We got to fill those sinks. And so essentially what we do is we then run a fill operation that fills those sinks. And I mention this right now because what we're doing here is we're kind of manipulating with reality. Uh, and so we have these pits and these, uh, these sinks in the real world. But here, what we got to do is to get to what we want to do, to get to this perfect DEM, let's say, we got to do some manipulation. After we run the fill, we then say, okay, we have ourselves the perfect DEM, the hydrologically correct DEM, as they say in the GIS world. Or maybe you might hear depressionless DEM. Once we have a hydrologically correct DEM, we can now run a few different operations based on whatever our objective might be. Do we want to delineate watersheds? Do we want to draw and or identify the location of streams? The moral of the story here is we couldn't do these things without our triangle there, our hydrologically correct DEM. And so then from there, some processes we can do. We'll do flow accumulation uh, to identify the location of streams. We'll then use flow length to show the distance uh, upstream or downstream a particular pixel or cell is along a particular flow. And we can then also use our depressionless DEM to create watersheds. And watersheds or basins are essentially what they are, are regions that contain within them drainage networks. So this shows a flow chart of how we're going to work through the various steps to complete the various tasks that we have in this module, but also in the future exercise.